And welcome to Base Sunday, everyone. I'm your host, Frank Malico. Good to have you on board. We begin with our weekly pitch. If you got a show idea, we would love to hear from you. Go to facebook.com slash Bay Sunday. Comment to the page you see below me there, and we will be in touch. Our first guest has some frequent flyer miles, I guess you could say. She has skied to both the North and South Pole, summited the highest mountains in the world, including Everest. Impressive, you better believe it, but it's what she has taken off those mountains and all her experiences that drives her today. Leadership through extreme conditions, and it's all chronicled in her New York Times bestseller, On the Edge, The Art of High Impact Leadership, that now has her in high demand from Wall Street to West Point. Say hi to the author and mountaineer extraordinaire, Allison Levine. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. We were talking off camera, but what, what drives you? I mean, <laughs> do you ever, are you tired? I'm always tired. <laughs> okay. I uh, drink a lot of coffee. What drives me? I feel like, you know, we're on this planet for such a short amount of time and just having different types of adventures and different experiences. And I, you know, when I was younger, I was so intrigued by the stories of the early Arctic and Antarctic explorers and the early mountaineers. And I thought, well, if these guys can do it, there's no reason why I can't get out there and do some of these things as well. Yeah, what the heck? Well, yeah. in 02, um, you decided to climb Everest with a bunch of women. Yes. And you got about a football field away, a 100 yards away, and something happened. Yes. So we were the first American women's Everest expedition. I was the team captain. We were sponsored by Ford. And first team of American women to go climb the mountain. We got to within a couple hundred feet of the summit, got caught in a whiteout, had to turn back just that close to the top, which is a, a heartbreaker. And all the time you were there for two months, the money, the effort, and yes. so close. And especially, I mean, you feel like you've got this great corporate sponsor and they funded your trip and you really want to make them proud and, you know, you want the team to have a great experience. But the number one goal of any expedition is always come back alive. Right. You know, number two, come back with all your fingers and toes. Number three, come back as friends with the people that you're with. So getting to the summit of a mountain can never be the number one goal. It has to come, you know, after safety. Well, you, you call it failure. Some people right. do. Um, uh, you, you did as best you could, but you learned so much more that time around than you did the second time around. Tell us what you learned once you got off the mountain. What did you bring I down? I did. So what I realized is that getting to the top of a mountain really isn't all that important. It's the lessons you learn along the way and what you're going to do with that information to be, to be better going forward. So it was eight years before I got up enough courage to go back to the mountain. In 2010, I went back and did Summit, and that was the completion of what's known as the Adventure Grand Slam, which is climbing the seven summits, the highest peak on each continent, and then skiing to both the North and the South Pole. And there's a few dozen people in the world now who've completed the Grand Slam, and once I finished it, I thought, oh, okay, well... Gosh, this isn't that big of a deal. I thought standing on top of a mountain, you're only up there for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. It's really more about the journey and the lessons you learn along the way and what you're going to do with that information so you can be better on the next mountain. And here comes the book, On the Edge. Right. Where you have taken what you've learned on that mountain and kind of applied it to a, a leadership platform, not only on the mountain, uh, but also uh, in the classroom, uh, military, uh, Fortune 500 companies, and I, I think you said the decisions under extreme, extreme conditions, right? Uh, yes. That's a leader. Yeah, well, what I found um, from spending time in these remote extreme environments is the lessons that you learn there really apply to a lot of different environments, whether it's the business world or the classroom or the military. People can learn a lot from these environments because you have to learn how to think on your feet. You have to learn to, uh, you know, be able to put together the right type of team. You have to be able to deal with controversy and team dynamics. And you realize that whatever plan you came up with, you know, last year, last month, last week, even that morning, you realize your plan's outdated as soon as it's finished when you're in these environments that change very rapidly. And the business world is kind of like that as well. And you talk about uh, the leader of the group. Yes. A good leader's got to have some skin in the game. What do you mean by that? Well, as a leader, you can never expect the people on your team to be willing to endure anything that you are not willing to endure. So you should never ask anyone on your team to do something that you wouldn't be willing to do yourself. Exactly. And uh, eight years later, you decide to do Everest. Give it another go. Talk about the euphoric feeling when you made it to the top and tell us why you had to go back. Well, I went back actually in honor of a friend of mine who passed away from cancer uh, in 2009. And a few months later, I always thought, oh, I'll never go back to that mountain. I don't have any unfinished business on Mount Everest. I don't need to spend two months on that mountain to go the last couple hundred feet. You know, I learned everything I can learn. And then uh, I went back actually to honor a friend of mine who was very courageous. And 
Uh, she was one of the most tremendous athletes I'd ever met. So I went back in 2010 in her honor, and I scaled them out, and I got to the very summit. And then I realized, this is just not that big of a deal. Oh, my God. being at the top of the mountain, even though it was summiting Mount Everest and completing the Adventure Grand Slam. And I thought, you know, you're on top of this mountain for a few minutes. That's it. And I realized that plenty of better, stronger, more skilled, much more deserving climbers than Allison Levine, you know, didn't make it that day for whatever reason. Most of them turned around because of the weather. Mm -hmm. um, people that stand on the summit of Mount Everest are no better than the people who turn around just short because it's not about the few minutes you spend at the top. It's the you journey know, to get up learn, there. What you learn, and exactly. And what you bring back down on the mountain. What's next? Oh, good question. Uh, there's so many things on my list that I want to do. First of all, I've never been climbing in India, so I would like to go there. I would also love to go back to Nepal and do a first ascent on an unclimbed peak because there are a lot of mountains out there that have never been climbed. How much coffee did you have this morning? Zero. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> None. <laughs> well, I love your energy. Love your book. Thank you. Thank Allison, you so much for having thanks me. Thanks for coming in. If you'd like more information about Allison's new book, log on to AllisonLevine.com. That's AllisonLevine.com. On the Edge. More Bay Sunday right after the break. Stay right there, folks.